but it is first my honor to hand over the floor to the Secretary General of the United Nations, His Excellency Antonio Guterres. The Secretary General will be with us for this opening and may have to leave at some point due to other pressing commitments during this General Assembly. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we meet at a time when our world is challenged on all fronts. Most of those challenges, particularly rising poverty and inequalities, have been aggravated by a pandemic that continues to upend lives, livelihoods, and economies. This is the third UN General Assembly taking place under the shadow of COVID-19. Despite the heroic efforts of frontline health workers, health systems around the world were woefully unprepared for the devastation of this virus. And while no country was spared, low and even middle-income countries continue to suffer the worst impacts. At the same time, we can draw strength from some inspiring progress. We are seeing rising vaccination coverage in all countries, particularly among high-risk populations. Only 10, mostly those facing humanitarian emergencies, remain below 10% vaccine coverage. On average, countries have vaccinated 75% of their healthcare workers and other populations. New oral antiviral drugs are coming on board. Combined with testing, these offer a clear path to preventing deaths among the most vulnerable. But they must be available for all. We need to learn with inequity that we faced in relation to vaccine distribution. And countries are increasingly integrated COVID-19 measures into routine health services and programs. The lessons from these successes are clear. The virus is treatable, we can save lives, and we can bring the virus under control even among high-risk populations. If we could combine these tools with greater ambition among world leaders, we could end the pandemic this year. But that requires closing three major gaps. First, we must close the booster gap. Vaccine booster coverage remains low everywhere. But low-income countries in particular are still struggling, with only 35% of healthcare workers and 31% of older populations fully vaccinated and boosted. Our top priority continues to be getting vaccines into arms. This must include addressing the shadow pandemic of vaccine hesitancy and countering misinformation with life-saving facts. Second, we must close the testing gap. Testing rates are plummeting everywhere, exposing the world to potential variants and undermining the rollout of new treatments. Giving these new medicines a chance means dramatically expanding testing and treatment coverage, especially for low- and middle-income countries. And third, we must close the preparedness gap. Now is the time to strengthen our defense against future threats by investing in early warning systems, local manufacturing and diagnostic capabilities, and a well-paid, well-supplied health workforce. We must never be caught so unprepared again. Excellencies, making progress towards closing these gaps is what today is all about. It's time to build political momentum to finish the job on COVID-19. Let's get it done. Let's end this pandemic once and for all. Thank you.